Well, yeah. You know, if, if they're still finding uh, Nemo, just just let them know that, um, yeah, <laughs> we've got him here. Right, now, this is uh, Prosper, and welcome to the 2 p.m. Lunch and Learn. Um, very excited today. It's one of those days where you just wake up and everything seems to be in place, okay? So, if this is the first time you're actually tuning in or getting to know what we do every single day, uh, Monday to Friday uh, at 2 p.m. AEST, we show up and we we talk about how we can help you market, scale, and grow a business that's actually profitable. I see Matthew is tuning in and Alex. Thank you so much, guys. Hope the weekend is still fantastic wherever you are. And Henry, thank you so much, buddy, for you know chatting with me and you know helping me understand what it is that you do. Um, you know, it, it just makes me know who is in my um. You know, following and uh, how I can be best of service. All right. So today the topic is is pretty much something that's dear to me, and I really, really want that you also start paying particular attention to how you create and you relate to your customers, because at the end of the day, these are the people that are actually going to be voting for you to be in power or to be in business by and using their credit cards, okay? So if you're just tuning in right now, can you just type in where you're tuning in from? We like to welcome everybody else, and just so that maybe if within the audience somebody leaves around you, you can always mastermind with them. So type in where you're coming in from, that always helps us to keep track as to how far our message is going. Like like I said, my name is Prosper Taruvinga, founder and CEO of Live Long Digital, and I'm the creator of the Online Prosperity Blueprint that comes in as a four-step system that's designed to help you market, scale, and grow your business so you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I'm based in Melbourne, but obviously I work with people all over the place, all right? So before we get started, I want you to figure out exactly who you are and what it is that you're doing within your business and how it is that you are actually helping the people or how you are relating to the people you're doing business with. Now I see Tichan on my chapa. Matema Ziri say Tatenda Wonas Nes Chedru Gunjani Mganwami ho in Bonani i we can do be right to go away on an seven zela. Thank you so much for tuning in. Alright, so I know the goal of every enterprise or anybody else that goes into business is to actually get a lot more clients and customers. But in as much as money is involved, the more you make, the more you gotta keep. And it's not easy. The more that you're making, the more customers you're reaching out to, the more you gotta satisfy and the more you gotta keep them so that they continuously buy from you and, you know, they come and become repeated customers, all right? So, you know, I assume that that is your goal for being here and that you really want to achieve a business that you can work in that's profitable and you can actually enjoy it. And for most of us, we want a business that we can pass on to our kids, all right? So a lot of you guys might not realize that this is where your business might head out to or how you can actually achieve these goals. That's the reason why we sit down here every single day for 30 minutes and we try and, um, you know, uh, discuss things that might help you to actually um, start scaling and grow your own business. All right. So you might have noticed when I started, I started with, um, um, you know, this little uh, plush toy of Nemo and it's a story that a lot of people take for granted, how a father goes out of his way to go and search for his son and eventually meets up with, um, you know, a dumb girl who is always forgetting um, how to get around and stuff like that. That's exactly how it is every single time we go out and search for clients. We are using... Um, you know, things like Facebook, we're using things like Google AdWords, we're using things like email marketing, etc. All those things are like Dora, all right? They constantly forget where Nemo is. They constantly forget what they're supposed to be doing for us. And if we don't come in and actually take things by the horn and actually take charge of where we really want this communication to go with, with our clients, 
we lose them, all right? So we might all want to say, yes, we can automate our businesses. Yes, we can send automated emails. But people still like to relate to people. People still like to relate and, and be heard. People still like to be listened to. And our prospects still like that human interaction. How many times have you called like your service provider and then you hear an automated machine, uh, Please place four because your call is valuable. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. If it was that valuable, wouldn't somebody be waiting for that call for me immediately? All right. So stop lying to your customers that they're valuable when you're doing the exact opposite to showing them that they are valuable. OK, so this is exactly what I actually, you know, um, uh, you know, have been seeing. Likewise, many business owners are asking stupid questions. Many business owners are not doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. And they're only looking at how can they generate more revenue and looking for how to get more customers instead of actually looking for the ones or looking after the ones they actually have. All right. So it costs five to ten more times more to acquire a new customer than it is to retain the ones that you actually have. All right. So I understand you might have technology, um, you might have all those things, but what are you doing to actually keep those people that are within, you know, you've worked with and so that you keep relating and creating more stuff for them so that they keep coming back for more. All right. So you want to make sure that if you've got previous customers, take inventory of those past clients. All right. So, you know, one of my, 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 my clients has been in business for quite a while and they were almost getting bankrupt. You know, they were months behind on their rent. They had not paid a, a few of their workers and most of the softwares within their business were not working, you know, and after, you know, they got so desperate, that's when they came to me. And I was like, okay, um, Sally, what's going on in your business? And she's like, oh, um, you know, things are not working. I haven't been getting new clients, etc., etc." I asked her just one question. And my question to her is, how many people have you served over the years? You know, and then when we looked at it, we found out that she had over 400 past clients and about 1,500 emails that she had not even touched or that she had not even gone back to say even thank you for your service or thank you for your for your business. All right. So this uh, six, I mean, about 400 people roughly that already know, like and trust her. And as you know, guys, people do business with those that they know, like and trust. All right. So we went on in a process of just really, you know, re what would you call it? Resuscitating or resurrecting this, um, these people and actually reconnecting her and then those people that had already done business with her went on to refer her to other people because she made that initial content. All right. So some of these things that we are doing within our business and leaving it to automation, we're crippling ourselves more than we would actually, you know, you know, take take notice of. OK, so you want to maintain the relationships with your clients, um, you know, amicably. You want to make sure that you are serving them and you are bringing them as closer to you as possible. And these days with social media, it gets even easier. All right. So, you know, posting a little bit about what you're doing behind the scenes, showing people your daily life. People want to be involved. People want to know exactly where their money is going, how you're spending it, etc., etc. OK, so, you know, it's common practice. I know this is what everybody else does on a Monday like this. You always want to be looking in for new clients. But the people you already have, you already have a gold mine within your email. You already have a gold mine in your roller decks, et cetera, et cetera. And cheers money for tuning in. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. And it was really, really nice talking to you briefly regarding what it is that you do there. And Dave Kaufman, thank you so much for tuning in. All right. So we can't go around chasing sort of waterfalls. We already have, you know, the golden goose or the golden eggs in our, you know, business under the file called past clients. What are you doing to resuscitate that, that, that those people? What are you doing to, um, you know, find out where they are? What are you doing to find out if your services or your products helped them? Are you doing anything to bring them back in to show them that you've got new stuff or you've got new content? All right. So within those people that we've already served, 
there lies you know golden eggs and especially these days where you can actually create content by case studies you can also create content by just interviewing people you've worked with before while they're giving you a testimonial you can then utilize those testimonials as part of an ad that then when somebody has seen that you actually do provide results for other people it will bring you closer to your new clients and you don't have to spend that much on adwords all right so at the end of the day a, 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 a lot of us you know we are not really re-energizing our business using the people that we've already spoken to that already know like and trust us there is a gold mine in there and if you've got a list of people that you haven't spoken to if you've got a list of people that you haven't sent a postcard you don't know when their birthday is or you don't know the milestones within their business it's not going to help you trying to bring in more clients if you are not even able to service the ones that you already have all right and marnie says awesome love your energy well thank you so much for tuning in i mean obviously today i'm really wanting to talk about how to actually maintain the relationships that you already have and to be human about it you know because at the end of the day with all this automation we have now become desensitized from our own message and why would you think that your customer is going to you know feel that passion or that energy if you are not presenting it to them all right this morning today I've already um, had my partnership call with um, a few of my strategic partners, you know, just so that I always constantly touch base with them, even if I'm not selling, even if they are not selling to me, that human interaction makes the world go round. All right. So you don't want to continually, um, you know, be in your own cocoon and not reach out to the people that can actually make or break your business. Now, Chad Chuma says returning customers are also known to spend more than first time customers. And that's absolutely right. You know why? Because these people already know you. These people already trust you. And, you know, you've already transacted with them. All right. First cut is the deepest. No matter who's going to come after them and say, hey, listen, Chedu, um, you know, Chedu offers a bad service just because the way you treated them, the way they got the service from you and how you made them feel or what you did to take them from where they are to where they want to be. That, my friends, that, my friends, will give them wanting more. OK, so at the end of the day, we already have the skills. We already have the customers. We already have the people we have served. We can also then use them to try and find out how we can multiply them. OK, so let's say your person is Andy, right? You want to know what ticks Andy, what they have, what in what they enjoy, what is triggering their emotions. You know, how do they react to your offers? Once you study those people, you can now go in and create and relate, you know, to other people that are like them. In, um, if I'm not mistaken, they say there's, you know, plus or minus six degrees of separation or something like that. So that automatically means if my math is right, every single person has plus or minus 250 people that look the same as them, feel the same as them, think the same as them. Your mission is to duplicate that person 250 times and more often than not, you only need 1% of that person depending on what service you're offering. So half the time we're going out there trying to chase waterfalls and, you know, we're not sticking to the rhythm of what we already know. I don't care what you've been told, but what you have might be nothing at all and you're obviously going too fast while you're leaving those people that already know, like and trust you. It's easier to talk to people that have had a feel of who you are, and read your content, etc., etc. Okay, so in that file that says past clients, that's where your gold mine is. Okay, so this is how you then relate to them. Pick up the phone, send them a postcard, find out when their daughter is having a birthday, etc., etc. Okay, because at the end of the day, if your house is on, is on fire, would you send an email to ask for help? Would you email the fire brigade and say, hey, listen, come around to number 15. I can't move uh, street because there's a fire. You pick up the phone and you call them. So more likely than not, wouldn't you pick up a phone to somebody you already know, you know, and, you know, just finding out how they're doing and how their service is going and how you can be of more value. 
All right, even if it's not picking up the phone, writing them a, a you know a, a message because they already know you. It's it's not an unwelcome message, and that's what makes it so perfect. You know, just really going over and above because you know what we've so become desensitized because at the end of the day everything is instant, everything is like live like this, and we're no longer creating and relating to the people that actually got us to where we are. Do you know what I mean? Your customers should be your best people ever. You know why? Because they're going to afford you the lifestyle that you're living. They're going to afford you those Ferraris that you're looking for. They're going to afford you those holidays. So start treating them as human beings and not just a hashtag. All right? So, you know, that's why this is so perfect. You know, you, 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 you might have swiped right with them, but you got to also Netflix and chill with them. Find out what movies they like watching. All right, that way you get to know how you can then create and relate and get more out of them than you are currently getting at the moment. Yeah, because I work with, within the SEO framework of business, but tell, I'll tell you something. If somebody has a website or is a website developer, the only logical place you can actually charge a customer is when you create that website for them. And then after that, there's no real reason for you to continuously be in touch with that person. But you can then offer them advertising services. You can then offer them SEO services and then build continuity within your business. And before you know it, I don't know if you can see it. There's a value ladder that you can create within your business. So, you know, and consistently ask them, would you like chips with that? Or would you like fries with that? That's where most of the money then comes from, from behind the scenes and when you're creating and relating to the people that you're actually working with. So don't hesitate to pick up that phone for people that you actually have done business with and just find out how can I be of service. If you cannot serve them at that point, find out how or who do they know amongst them that can help you or who you can help with the kind of service that you're doing. Because if they're happy with what you're doing, they would obviously want to refer you, you know, your service to their friends, their relatives, etc., etc. But they're not going to do that if you don't prompt them. All right? So at the end of the day, you might also just really want to connect with them just to find out if they're alive. You know, just to really know if they're alive because your invoices might not be, you know, responded to or, you know, your, 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 your emails may not be responded to because maybe that person died. You know, so, so you really want to make sure that these people are there, you know, you're constantly updated as to where they are, etc, etc. You know, you know, you just also want to update their information, especially, you know, when these days when people don't actually just live in one place. Some people are like digital nomads, so you want to make sure that you always have their current info and you can literally be corresponding to them. That would save you a lot of time just in case you want to send them a Christmas present or some information that needs to be delivered by post. All right, so that's where a lot of people are missing it out on by not really connecting and integrating with the people they already take money from. Because if you are not taking money from people that you enjoy being around, then why are you in business? Right? These people should actually be so good. My measure of do I want to work with this person is can I leave them with my daughter and I can go out um, you know, for, for, for a drink with my wife? That's, how the, that's the measure of how I want to work with these people because the world has become so global. All right, you got to think out of the 24 hour box. You got to think out of the location box. You can reach out to most people that you actually really want to work with and that will then make your business profitable and enjoyable. All right. So, you know, it, it, it's just maybe a friendly outreach here and there and it's, it's you know, strictly non salesy but you're still connecting and relating to these people and it generates new opportunities for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't have to just expect your customers to reach back to you or just call you when there's a problem. All right. I want to ask you something. When, whenever you go out and, and you meet, you know, people, uh, networking events, etc., etc., or you get their business card and they'll be like, oh, yeah, we'll call you. How is that going? You got to be the first person to initiate these conversations and become the better person and the human side of you that way. It will make you stand out in the market. That way, it will make you be the person that they go to. And it's easier for them to transact with you. You know why? Because they already know, like, and trust you.
Alright? In this day and age where it's very difficult to stand out, and the only way you can stand out is being human, I think we need to really, really sit back and look at our processes, look at how we're dealing with our customers, who we communicate with, how we communicate with them, and etc., etc. Over the weekend, we went to um, Phillip Island. Um, for, for those of you that live in Australia, you would know that there's a lot of penguins there. Really cute little animals, etc., etc. But... It is very, very difficult if you've got a favorite penguin to, you know, you know, single it out from amongst all the other penguins. You know, most of them, they tend to dress the same, you know, black jacket, white shirt. And that's exactly how the market is like right now. You cannot tell apart a business person, an entrepreneur, an MLM person. You cannot tell apart, you know, a one click wonder or somebody who's just started business yesterday. You know, so, you know, business people tend to look, you know, the same and they're all clamoring for attention, especially on social media like this. How are you standing out already to the people that already know you? How are you being different? How are you providing so much value that they want more from you, that they refer you to other people and that you're not no longer just continuously repeating yourself? And how are you actually relating to the people that have already paid you money and said, hey, listen, I think you're the right kind of person that can solve my problem. All right. So, you know, most people out there, they're just trying to hook their customers in with whatever clickety clack trick they find. That's a shiny object. You want to be totally different. Relate to the people that are paying your bills because they are. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, all those other guys on the market that are constantly asking customers, do this, do that, jump on here, sit for two hours on this webinar and get nothing. You want to be different. Provide value, be of value, speak value, do value and over deliver. All right, because customers are now so desensitized to this whole, yeah, look at me, look at me. You make people want to see what you're doing by being a better person being approachable and offer customers something of absolute value so that they will be like, you know what? I think I need to reciprocate what this guy is doing by actually paying him with my credit card. Yeah. So you want to leave a business that's, you know, that's profitable and enjoyable. You are creating with your clients. You're always communicating with them because if you're not in constant touch with your customers, somebody else is trying to lure them to you. And the more you are not relating and creating to the ones that are already paying you, the reason why they paid you was because somebody was not treating them well. Because you're not the first person to, to actually come into their space. You're not the first person to, um, to offer them whatever service you're offering. All right, so you want to make sure those people that are already in your realm, you're offering them um, you know, bonuses without asking for anything in return. Do you know what I mean? There's always that law of sowing and reaping. Results are never denied. Once you give a whole lot more, people would want to reciprocate that by, you know, offering you their credit card. You know? So make sure the people that you have already dealt with, the people that you've already spoken to, are going to be the advocates that you're going to create within your business. Okay? All right. So if you follow how the online prosperity works, when you've got the authority, you create relationships with these people and you build loyalty and ambassadors that will help you with your marketing. It helps you with your branding and you now have a community that constantly talks about your message even when you're not there. So you need to foster that buzz around your message. Right now, it might be a weekend where you are. You might have gone to a barbecue or you might have been out with friends, etc., etc. Did anyone talk about what you're doing to somebody and say, oh, I remember Tyler does that. You need to instigate those communications because you're offering people things of value. So the only way they can reciprocate is to give you more business or refer other people to you. You know, you know, if a gift is freely given, it, in, you know, it instigates a sense of loyalty to the person who's receiving it. That's just a fact. You know, so, you know, despite, you know, all those other uh, beliefs that you might have that oh, if I give people all this stuff for free, they might not want to buy from me. That's horseshit. 
All right, you want to make sure you're over delivering to your customers, you're providing the value that you did say you're giving out, etc, etc. And also over the weekend, I asked this question, what makes you credible? What is it that makes you credible? Because if you're not showing signs of credibility, consistency, then nobody's going to want to do business with you. All right, so when it comes to it, all the ad spend that we're putting out um, and, and trying to bring in customers, but we're not doing anything to keep those customers, you are still just going to be peddling on water and you're not going anywhere. All right, so whatever people you bring into your, your realm, make sure that they don't just leave. You're offering them value. You're offering them everything else that they cannot find anywhere else. And that way you're creating and relating to people that actually do care about your business. All right. It's no longer, you know, one of those built it and they will come. Of course. I mean, but at the end of the day, you want to make sure that everybody that you bring into your world is satisfied, would be an ambassador for your work. And you actually know who they are so that when when the time comes for them to either reciprocate with their credit card, they can do that or they can refer work to you. All right. So. At the end of the day, you know, I mean, there's a lot of formulas that you can use. There's a lot of underground secrets. There's a lot of shiny objects that you can buy for you to gain market share. But you got to maintain it. And the only way you're going to be maintaining it is to make sure that the people that you're actually serving, you're giving them the utmost respect that they deserve because that money that they are using is hard and money. When you go out as a business like myself, I'm working with people's hopes and dreams. Everything that they have sacrificed, you know, maybe their relationships, they've sacrificed people that they love, they've sacrificed, you know, all the fun they could be having by creating their business. No, who am I now to just take their money and not give them something in return? So we have to also start really, 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 really respecting the people that we're doing things for. We got to start respecting the people that we're working for. We got to start respecting the people that are paying us money because all of that they're doing is so that we stay in business. All right. Just like any other president, they go out campaigning so that people would vote for them. You, as a, as a person in business, you are the president of your own company. But for you to stay in power, people have to campaign. I mean, people have to vote for you with their credit card. And these days, it's not just as easy as, oh my God, yeah, you know, just come around here and I'll show you what I got. Show that you can actually help people by helping them. And while you're doing that, they then decide on their own, is this guy worth my time? Because nobody has time to go around and fiddle with your, you know, landing pages and fiddle with your, you know, lead magnets that are not congruent to what it is that you're actually helping them. Give people good advice, help people and actually show respect for what you do, who you do it for and why you're doing it. Okay. That way, this is the way, that's the new prosperity era, guys. If you're not showing up for your customers, if you're not relating to them, if you're not picking up the phone to congratulate them on the new golf clubs that they bought, you know why? Because you're stalking them on Facebook, then I think you're missing out on a lot of money that could be coming in. Why? Because everybody now wants businesses that care. The whole money, 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 jab, 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 you know, is, is, is really, really, I mean, like right hook, right hook, me, 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 look at me, me, me. Nobody cares. People only care what is it that you can do for them, what's in it for them. Right, I show up every single day for 30 minutes. You know, I could have been doing something else, eating my lunch, or you know, I don't know, fornicating because you know what, I've made it. But I'm still out here trying to make sure that I'm creating and relating and making sure that the people that I'm going to be working with already know, like, and trust me so that when the time comes for the transaction to happen, it's not going to be painful. It's going to be a painless transaction. You give me the money, I give you the goods. Right. So, you know, they, they, they could be formulas around how you think you should run your business. And Sa Sahabaj, Samir, thank you so much for tuning in, man. You know, there could be underground secrets. There could be gaining market share, you know, but the most effective approach is to personally reach out to people, be real, talk to them, absolutely care about their pain and absolutely 
care about really, really being there for them and offer solutions that have so much value. They're going to want to come back for more. They're going to tell their friends about it. And it will be just that simple. All you got to do is show up, give value, give more value, a little bit extra value, and then you walk away. That way, somebody's life has been created. Somebody's day has been made. You never know what impact you have by you showing up every single day in somebody's life. All right? This has been Prosper. I really hope that you're going to have a fantastic week ahead. And if you really, really liked this show today, please share it. Or you can write down what it is that really, really touched you so that we can continue this conversation in the comments below. Okay? In the meantime, have a fantastic rest of your day. And we're only just getting started.